To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 16, Yahweh to Abraham, kill the boy. God orders Abraham to sacrifice his son. Abraham obeys. At the last moment, his son is spared. This is the binding of Yitzchak, one of the most emotionally charged stories of the entire Bible. Let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. Wow. Wow, what a story, huh? Yes, wow. I'm, uh, goosebumps. This story gives me goosebumps. It's incredible. It's okay. It's, in, it's amazing. And it's amazing in a very unique sense because it breaks so much of the mold of the stories so far. We got used to stories that are somewhat uh, unemotional. Yes. Very, let's say, cold, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Noah, Calculated. Uh, Noah, even though he's alone, basically floating in space with uh, the entire uh, human and uh, <laughs> uh, the other species uh, race, the feeling of loneliness is not so much uh, yeah. expressed. It's only indirectly hinted at. Only if you imagine the scene and you have vivid imagination and you imagine that yes. arc inside of a yes. seed. And like it says, and God remembered Noah. Mm-hmm. And only from that you can infer that he was lonely. Yeah. That's like the extent of the emotion yeah. that we had so far. But this is, this is a different writer. I think this is the same writer. Uh, this, I'm basing it on nothing. <laughs> The same writer of the uh, the Tower of Babel story. It was it's the same uh, writing staff. <laughs> the same writing staff, and also the same writing staff of the Binding of Ishmael. We'll yeah, talk about from the that creators too. of. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this uh, this episode will have a little bit of a different format. We want to go a little bit line by line just to relay the 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 power in the story and how it uses words to convey emotions and it's so concise and compact that every extra word weighs so much and a lot of intertextuality with other stories Mm -hmm. and then after that we'll sum things up it's almost like uh, the lack of vocabulary and the lack of a dramatic uh, formula yeah it's it's very raw and in that instances it's almost has the, the same effect as poetry yeah every line is minimalistic wow per se it's like some kind of a minimalistic way of storytelling and it's so primal that i remember when i heard that story for the first time in bible class when i was like eight maybe it wasn't like the first first time but first time that it was like uh, the story was told as it is being told by the bible a vivid effect uh, on the audience <laughs> and we'll also go into why they're using these effects here what the purpose because we, go, we have to look at the story in the entire context of the book of genesis setting the stage for the hebrews to how they came to be mm-hmm. okay are you ready first of all i think it starts like uh with a segue, someone came up with the segue technology. <laughs> it's like after what happens uh, in the Sodom and Gomorrah. No, not Sodom and Gomorrah. With Avimelech, whatever. It starts with, and after that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like somebody says, oh, we can connect <laughs> the, two, the two stories because it's written totally differently than the story before and after. Yeah. It stands out as something foreign. And so after that, the God tries Abraham. Yeah. And he said to him, Abraham. And he answers, here I am. In Hebrew, it's just one word. Hineni. Hineni. It's very nice. And he tells him, and this is now a callback <laughs> to the first line of the story of Abraham. He, told, he tells him, please take, just please, <laughs> your son, your only son that you love, Yitzchak, and go forth, Lech Lecha, Lech which Lecha. is the same verb, that God used to tell, the, to tell him, go to the, yeah. the promised land. Go to the land of the Moria, and there sacrifice him to me on one of the mountains that I will show you. Yeah. Again, that I will show you. This is again a callback to the previous line. Yeah. It's like a template, a storytelling template. Insert here, blah, 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 to yes. blah, 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 from blah, blah, blah. <laughs> because it works. Yeah. Let's use it again. Yeah. Let's yeah. use it again. 
so at the first time that he told him he said leave your house the house of your father your land your nation and here it's your son your only son that you love it's Hak. this is like four time emphasizing just to show how horrible of an order it is and it's not even his only son the original uh, text says at Yahidha which literally means your only son but maybe it also means the one that you care the most because it's similar to another word combination which means Yahid Skula some a unique mm. maybe it's your unique son mm. I'm completely stretching here maybe it's an earlier version of a story about Abraham when he didn't have yeah Ishmael. <laughs> exactly. that's another option and uh, this entire scene is somewhat similar to the explosion of Hagar and uh, almost uh, uh, her son Ishmael dying yeah very similar a lot yeah. of callbacks yeah in, in, in that Ishmael story, uh, Avram is not told to sacrifice or kill his son, but he needs to accept yeah. his son being exiled into the desert, which is tantamount to a death sentence. And then yeah. as uh, his mom, Hagar, uh, Abraham's uh, concubine, as she accepts death, then her son is saved by angels that God sent. And it portrays drama. The you personal feel, drama. You feel Hagar's pain. Yes, you feel yes. her angst. You feel her anxiety. And then Despair. You feel, and then you feel the calm sensation when the deity tell her, don't worry, you're lying with... And no, no, no. Okay, we'll it ends in Beersheba. It starts in Beersheba. And this story ends in Beersheba. So, so definite uh, yeah. reference. There's another parallel here. Uh, the use of the, of the word boy. Yitzhak at first is differentiated from the two boys there. And then when Abraham takes him up the mountain, he becomes Naal, boy. Mm. And Ishmael, Yitzhak's uh, half-brother, was referred to in his binding story as a boy. God hears the sound of the boy. And in Abraham, in Yitzhak's story, when he wants to stop <laughs> death, he says, don't raise your hand on the boy. So this is not a standalone story. Another reference to uh, the binding of Ishmael. Abraham wakes up early in the morning, both times, gets ready. So you have the suspense building. A difference between the first binding of Ishmael and the second binding of Yitzhak is Sarah is the one, Sarah tells Abraham, ju- expel the, yeah. uh, the woman, uh, the concubine slash the sex slave with yeah. your son, expel them. And then he says that Abraham feels bad about it. Yeah. You don't hear that he feels bad about killing uh, Yitzhak. Just it it even it makes it even stronger yeah. because of the way that they're tiptoeing around it with father son father son walking together hand in hand, wow, and he argues with his, uh, with Sarah until God tells him, listen to her, don't worry, yeah, don't worry. Here it doesn't give him a reassurance. No, there's no don't worry, worry. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's, uh, for me, it's a callback also to like I said with the uh, Lech Lecha go forth. It's also like in the beginning. Where God created the land and the sea. This is again this just rising action from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Boom, go. You have to move. This is very, very, very effective. So now, from now on, becomes slower. Starting with the details that we don't get usually in the stories up to now. We are told how he prepares his donkey, mm-hmm. takes two slaves with him, prepares his ass, his ass, two slaves, Narim boys, and Isaac, his son. Yeah, we know that he's his son. We've known it <laughs> for some time now, but emphasize yeah. his son, Isaac. And he gets ready with, uh, with all the wood that he needs to go to the place that he was told to go. Mm-hmm. So it takes them three days to get there. And then when Abraham sees the place, then he talks to the boys. And he tells them, you wait here while I go bow down uh, to my Lord, which means basically wor- worship. And we will return. Yeah. Nashuva. So he lies to them. We will return, both of us. Because Abraham is probably like, a, let's face it, he's probably a primitive, uh, patriarchal uh, <laughs> father figure who yeah. doesn't really like to talk about his emotions. <laughs> so you can actually vividly imagine like his face, like his frowning, unemotional face, like, let's get it over with. I have, I don't want to do it, but I have an order. I want to, I can see his character. Not, not only there's a dramatization of the scene, like, uh, we'll take this and we'll go there. And then I see the mountain from afar. Oh. You wait here while, while I'll go. 
It's also, you can actually feel him, you can feel, see his face, you see, you see the dramatization uh, formula is inside of your mind. In this manner, because it's a dramatization, we get a glimpse into maybe the inner whatever workings of that uh, unemotional uh, old man <laughs> that yeah. doesn't like to talk about his feelings. <laughs> okay, so now he takes the, the wood and he puts the wood on Yitzhak, his son, again, every time. So, he, so this is now, again, he's going to tie him up to those woods and now he puts the woods on him. You have this dread, oh my goodness, what is happening? He takes him in his hand and the fire and the knife. But the knife, the translation doesn't convey yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, the knife, the original word is me'achelet. It's the same root of to eat. I imagine like a machete. And it's also an, uh, a verb that is used, I think, for uh, fire. Maybe it's even a word that describes a specific knife that is used for mm. worship or for a ritual. Mm. It's not like Vaikach et Asakin, Vaikach et Acherev, the sword or the knife. It's right. like a special word. Yes. Like uh, you have all those words for horses, <laughs> we have all those words for knives, <laughs> for ritualistic knives. <laughs> ritualistic knives. <laughs> so again, they go both of them together. Every word here is like th this is a, a book that uses w that is very economical with its words. Now they add both of them together. Yeah. And then it's like, Papa, Papa. My son, my son, <laughs> because it's Hak t talks to Abraham, his father, and he says, father. And Abraham says, I am here, son. <laughs> yes, son. Yes, son. He need. This is the same thing that he told uh, God at first. So he's just present. He's not active. He was he need before. Yeah. Present. It's like whatever in class. <laughs> here I am. Here I am. He's not thinking about anything. He's just doing. That is also amazing because we are talking about a, probably a story that predates Greek uh, yeah. theater yeah, so yeah and most of the linguistic creation back then were in form of poetry poetry not like modern poetry like uh, a storytelling poetry more or less yes. with uh, different kind of uh, rules and uh, formations not uh, necessarily rhymes not necessarily like the sonnets of Shakespeare yeah. a little bit m less developed let's say but here we have like a, a script ext dot ah, mountain of uh, moria dot day dot <laughs> abraham and isaac walk isaac father abraham yes son <laughs> as we know that he's going to kill him so to your point about other uh, poems they are very epic and grand and extraordinary and this is a scene between two people basically okay so you have the yeah. boys there but this is just two yeah. people an emotion like a connection yeah. between a father and a son a father who loves his son has been waiting for this son for his entire life prom and the son was promised to him by his god and now his god tells him to kill that boy and he just does it it's like uh, the entire epic stories of uh, other nations are like major budget films <laughs> Yes. with high <laughs> explosives and uh, special effects and here you have like a quote-unquote foreign film <laughs> who does the story of an old man who takes his son. <laughs> yes yes it's like a 90s iranian film or early 2000s yeah, iranian film that was low, very low budget like you, you have uh, one donkey two boys yes uh, i can imagine the trailer already <laughs> not a lot of dialogue you see them walking around in the wilderness, a story of a father. And there's some kind of a playwriter's trick here. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.